Up next on The Farmer and the Foodie, you'll learn how to dig for wild ramps, make ramp pesto, potato salad, and delicious short rib tacos using grass-fed beef from Fox Hollow Farm. Food is best when shared. Salud! Today on The Farm and the Foodie, we're going to be making short rib tacos with pickled ramps and ramp pesto potato salad. What's a ramp? Oh, Lindsay. Am I going to get dirty? Fox Hall Farm is 1,300 acres, and about 700 of that is pastures for the cattle and also the sheep, and then we have tons of woodlands. And so there's waterfalls, there's huge groves of trees, or you'll see all these birds just floating around the tops of the grasses, eating the bugs and microbial life in the soil. Okay, so we're gonna go get ramps. You wanna help me out and at least hold this? Jeez. Uh, the right. shovel's getting kind of heavy. So I have to use the shovel? Yeah, so you'll use the shovel <laughs> so then your nails don't get dirty. Okay. <laughs> It'll be really easy. <laughs> and it won't scratch your boots, don't all right. worry. All right, you promise. <laughs> and I'll get all the tops too, okay. and you can help me with that. All right, then can I cook them? Yes, of course. <laughs> and they're just there? Did you plant them? No, you don't plant them, actually. They're a wild edible, and so they're just naturally here. Fox Hollow Farm has become this sort of community of farmers and also this lifestyle of paying attention to nature and appreciating the earth and the animals that are on it. It's really become a place you can go and just sort of like deep breathe, feel like you're at home when you get there and just let all those worries of the busy lifestyle that we have just fade away. You can hear the water, Harrods Creek's right by, and yeah, so they yeah. love to be around water as well. It's oh. only in the early spring though, so like right before derby time right. is where you're going to find them, and it's a short window. window. Okay. Okay, I think I see some. Yeah. You smell them? Yeah. Okay, them. so there they are. All right. Let's go get them. Let's do it. So here's a nice little patch of ramps. We'll oh, get a yeah. few. So you see they like to be on this hillside in the shade. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and dig up a clump. All right. And I feel like I can already smell them. Is that what I smell, that yes. garlickiness? Oh my gosh, yes, this is perfect. Oh, great. Oh, wow. Awesome. Yeah, so you only want to dig a few of the bulbs. The rest we can use the leaves for the pesto. Oh, sweet. Yeah. OK, great. And I think we could throw these in with our short rib tacos, too. Yeah, that would be great, the yeah. bulbs. Yeah. Let's cook. OK. <laughs> In 2011, I started a blog that I called Foodie Girl, and that was purely just for fun out of my kitchen. I wanted to learn how to cook. I was teaching myself, was watching an extreme number of hours of Food Network and reading lots of cookbooks, and it was sort of an escape for me from my current job, just the daily grind. It was something to come home to and look forward to, and I was never good at a sport. You know, I never sort of had that one typical hobby growing up, but, but I was like, maybe I found this now later in life, my, my hobby or maybe my my little talent, I guess. And um, I got to meet Maggie, and she's this farmer extraordinaire, and we kept talking about, you know, we both have this extreme passion for food and eating it, where it's coming from. That was becoming, as I cooked more and more, more and more interesting to me, where it was coming from. I was much more um, concerned with that and wanted to learn about that. 
And through that, she and I just were like, what are we gonna do? We need to collaborate together. And the farmer and the foodie was born. Okay, we gotta get back to the house. I think the short ribs should be ready very soon and I cannot wait to pair them with these ramps. Great, and we should definitely bring Derek a taco. He'll love that. Yes, yes. <laughs> He's been working hard all day. Oh my gosh, these short ribs are gonna be awesome. Um, these are what we call our, our finished cattle. So these are the ones that they're, they're in the last stage before they leave Fox Hollow. Um, so we, have, we keep a small group here um, so that we can monitor their weight gains a little bit closer and stuff versus being in the bigger group. Uh, there's a lot of different breeds here. We're trying to figure out what works best on Fox Hollow for what we're trying to do. I enjoy working with cattle and livestock in general. My undergraduate and graduate degrees have to do with um, animal science and, and grazing. And at the time I was managing a, a facility where they had rodeos and stuff like that. And it's just inside and it's just not what I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to work with cattle. So uh, luckily we found Fox Hollow and I started here in January 2011. Grass-fed beef is, it's more that, I mean, grass is the natural diet for ruminants like cattle and sheep, and it's what they were designed to run on, you know, not, not designed to run on corn. Corn has too much oxygen when it breaks down in their stomach and um, gives them a handful of different diseases, I guess you could say, you know, problems um, when they're eating high volumes of that. So if it's good for them, then it's good for us. You know, if we're feeding them what they need, they're going to be healthier. So then when we eat that meat, it's going to be healthier for us versus something that's, you know, been sprayed. And essentially, if you feed them sterile food, you know, they're not as, as alive to nourish us. So. What, what I love best about my job is just coming out and, and being with the cattle in the fields, watching them. Um, they're a very interesting animal. They're a lot smarter than people give them credit for. It's a hard business to make work. It really is. And it's an incredible gift to be able to provide jobs for farmers, to provide land for young farmers that want to be able to farm on their own as well. Um, it's also been really neat to find incredibly talented people in the farming industry, especially our cattleman Derek, who can come on with a master's in forages and really teach us in our whole entire community, not just Fox Hollow, the importance of raising cattle on grass and how you can do that and make a profit. We just got back from the woods on our ramp hike. How yes. did you think it went? I think I think I did a great job. <laughs> I didn't get too dirty, and we collected these beautiful, beautiful wild leeks. Yeah, you think you'll be able to find them without me next um, time? I, I'll do a little bit better. I don't know. I like hiking with you, though, so <laughs> you should come every time. Okay, I will. We'll, so, we'll make that a deal. So tell me why these are so great to eat. So they're super nutritious, packed with vitamins and minerals. We have vitamin A, vitamin K, vitamin C, really boost that immune system. Good, Similar, good. Similar, the bulb also, like garlic, if you're feeling a little cold coming on, just pop one in your mouth, chew it up, 
It's intense, <laughs> but it'll do the trick. That'll give you some <laughs> solid breath, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I smell these delicious short ribs. I've got to figure out how to make these because I can't wait to do it at home. Well, they've been cooking away while we were on our hike for about two hours. We've got about 30 more minutes for them to just continue to become fall off the bone tender. Um, we started with the awesome grass-fed beef. Can't get better than that. Start off by searing the grass-fed beef, the short ribs, on all sides. And then into the pot, we're going to add a ton of great aromatics. We're talking an onion, a whole bunch of minced garlic, some cumin, paprika, mm. chili powder, bay leaf, Worcestershire sauce, and most importantly, an entire bottle of wine. <laughs> so, awesome. <laughs> so that is going to all just continue to simmer away for about another 30 minutes. And um, in the meantime, I think we should make some pesto. Yeah. So tell me about your recipe. Yeah, so I tried to come up with something to use the leaves because one, it's more sustainable to harvest just the leaf tops so then the bulbs can stay in the ground and come back year after year in the wild. So I found this idea that it would be delicious to use the spicy leaves with a little spinach to cut it and make some pesto out of it. I love it, this and is a great idea. One thing, I, I love pasta with pesto, but another thing I love is warm potato salad with a nice pesto. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our bunch of ramp leaves, okay. five ramp bulbs, a handful of fresh spinach, juice from one whole lemon, some pine nuts, which you graciously toasted. I sure did. <laughs> also some grated Parmesan cheese. I graciously grated. Yes, you did. <laughs> I should give you credit for that too. Um, the crushed red pepper, we're just gonna do a pinch. Okay. More if you want it spicy. And then we're gonna have a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of fresh ground pepper. Throw it on into the mixer. Okay. And then you can use a little olive oil, half a cup about, to smooth it all out and turn it into a perfect pesto. That's awesome. And then we're going to toss it with the warm potatoes and it'll probably just melt all together. Yes. Yeah, so what we need to do first before we do all that is okay. cut these potatoes in half. We're going to pop them into some room temperature water in our pot and then bring it up to a boil. 20 minutes, they're done. By then, the pesto's done and we'll toss it all together. Can't wait. Yeah. I think a lot of people are intimidated and sometimes I'll talk about a recipe and people will think, or you know, people will say, oh, well, that's too hard or I can't do that. And, I feel so strongly that that's not the case. So I really hope they can see and understand how easy and unintimidating the kitchen can be. And I'm very much a believer that it's anybody can cook and it's not a pretentious thing. It should by no means be intimidating. So we've got everything in the food processor, yep. all the ingredients. Why don't we give it a little tiny whirl? Okay. All right. Perfect. Great. Now we're gonna add some olive oil. Okay. And you're gonna let it smooth out a little. Got this? Yeah. Okay, I feel like you can handle this. I'm just gonna take a little break. Okay. Oh, uh, just relax and went out to the barn. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Looks good though, you keep going. Okay, good, thanks. Glad you all approve. <laughs> I can't tell you how much better I feel when I can look at my plate and know where 80% of the items on it are coming from. And then I've cooked them all myself in a very helpful way. That just, it just, there's a rewarding aspect to that. Wow, looking good. Thank you, welcome back. <laughs> oh, I feel great rested. Uh, well, I certainly hope you and the little lamb enjoyed your time off and your wine. While you were gone, I finished off this pesto potato salad. It smells amazing, yeah. first off. I hope I did you proud with your recipe. Of course. I cannot wait to enjoy this. Um, and yeah, it's taco time. Great, what can I do to help? Do you want to grab the beef from the oven? I'd love to. All Let right. me have this. Yes. Okay, we got these Yay. delicious short ribs. I'll get a plate oh over my gosh. here. Wonderful. 
All right. So I'll put them on the plate. There you go. Thank you. And what are you going to do next? Um, so yeah, when you pull them off the plate, the bones okay. more or less just going to be oh. falling off. Oh my you can gosh, see, they are. Because they've been just cooking away. And mm. yeah, they're just going to be delicious. So I'm going to start just shredding okay. everything up. And we'll just pull these bones right off. See how they just come off? That's my favorite part, honestly, about the short rib cut. It is such, I think, an underappreciated cut of meat in so many ways. Yeah, and it's a great value too. Yeah. And you get a lot per animal and so we love it. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. No, it is it is definitely worthwhile and it's it's great just as like a Sunday roast, but again in this like warmer summertime, I think yeah. on tacos it's a wonderful way to kind of mix it up and make the most of this great cut of beef. Yeah, so I'll get some of the sauce on top. This is so yes. juicy. And the good thing about grass-fed beef is it is lower in fat, so you're not gonna have all that fat in your yeah. sauce. And this is a great party recipe. That's another thing that I love about this particular taco recipe. First off, who doesn't love a good taco? <laughs> exactly. And second off, you can make it ahead of time. So when you, you know, want to go find ramps or something <laughs> like that, you have it um, just waiting for you when you get back, because it's really a one-pot meal, and it has this great sauce that it sort of makes all on its own. All right. Oh, this smells amazing. So yes. what else do we do to assemble these tacos? Okay, well, I think we are good and shredded up there. So we're just gonna okay. put this off to the side. And Beautiful. we have a couple tortillas here that oh, we've good. warmed up. Uh, I've warmed up. I've toasted <laughs> while you were in <laughs> leisure. Smoothing. Yes, um, I have made some cilantro and lime spiked sour cream. One of my favorite oh my ways gosh. to kind of just take sour cream to the next level. We're gonna also add some fresh arugula, which you got for us yes, from Pobbles. Yes, Pobbles Garden. Yes, some nice limes. What's a good taco without some lime juice? And then I think we need something else, which is like a kick of like a vinegar bite or something. I think I might have just the thing. You know, while you think I'm just <laughs> resting away in the barn, I also made some of your pickle recipe, the quick pickle recipe yes. that you have. And I did the ramp bulbs that we had left over from doing the leaves with the pesto. Perfect. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, let's. So shall we? Yes. Let's assemble these. Tacos. Now I like lots of meat on mine, honey. All right. Deal. <laughs> deal. <laughs> you are you are a farmer. Yes. I would yes. hope so. I would hope so. Don't go skimpy on me. All right. So we're gonna. <laughs> get a little bit of meat on either side. Great. Tacos. And then we're gonna, when I'm assembling tacos or any sort of meal that I'm like doing toppings for, you just kind of think about, you know, what are the flavors that are missing? So we have a really rich fatty oh, cut of perfect. meat here. And we want something kind of creamy and cool to kick through it. So that's where to me the sour cream oh, yeah. comes in. Um, and then we still want something with a nice bite and crunch, which, I mean, I think you had yeah. right on there with the pickles. Um, that couldn't be any better. So should we toss some of these in there? Yes, make sure to get We some. did add some carrots, too, with the ramp. Love it. That is wonderful. I promise I washed my hands after I played with the <laughs> lamb. <laughs> All right. Then a few fresh sprigs mm. of this arugula, which I can already smell the pepperiness. Oh. It's mm. my favorite. All right. Squeeze some lime on yep. each. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yum. Shall we try? Yep. All right. Let's do this. Taco time. Yes. Mmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's so good. <laughs> you have it all over my face. You do. So that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna have some meat. Yeah, it really just dissolves mm. into your mouth. It's so delicious. You're right about the arugula. It adds that pepperiness. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've got a that. nice bite from the pickled ramps and the carrot. And yeah, I think it's great. Uh, I'm ready to, perfect. Yeah, let's go outside. Yes, let's enjoy a glass of wine. Yes. Okay. And what about the pesto potato salad? Yes. Oh. All right. Okay, let's put it all together. Off we go. Yeah. <laughs> Our show is going to be different than other cooking shows because we're literally going to say, this is how this has grown. This is who grows it best in Kentucky. Let's learn all about this amazing, amazing, whether it's a vegetable or a locally grown meat. This is how it's harvested, how it's raised. And then here's the best way to cook that in the kitchen to best honor that ingredient. And um, you know, just why that's good for you. Maggie not only knows about how to grow and raise ingredients, but why you're growing them that way and what makes that better for you. I also think you don't find many simple recipes when you're watching these cooking shows. You know, they'll add all these different ingredients and have these fancy machines. I mean, we can cook an amazing meal with a cast iron skillet, some butter and olive oil, 
and just good seasonings and good ingredients. Yes. And so finding simple and simple recipes, I think, uh -huh. is the best about Lindsay's cooking. Is it's doable, and you can even do it when someone's over at your house for the first time <laughs> and you're entertaining them.